Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says all options are on the table as the U.S. intensifies its efforts against Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro. Pompeo made those remarks over the weekend during his tour through South America. He spoke to CBS News State Department reporter Christina Rafina in Colombia. That country has been a staging ground for humanitarian aid to Venezuela. We've made clear that all options are on the table, and you watch. You watch the political and dip diplomatic noose tighten around Maduro's neck. We will begin to do the same thing. The Cubans must understand, too, that there will be a cost associated with their continued support of Nicolas Maduro. We're going to have that same conversation with the Russians as well. And Christina Ruffini is joining us now from Washington. So, Christina, what can you tell us about uh, the secretary's trip? What did you see during his time in the region? Good morning, guys. Uh, we actually landed just a few hours ago after stops in Chile, Paraguay, Peru, and Colombia. And in each place, uh, President Pompeo met with the president and the foreign minister, and the topics were largely consistent. Uh, increasing economic ties, working on mutual security interests, countering China's growing uh, influence in the region, especially with financial aspects in South and Central America, and trying to, trying to solve the problem of Venezuela. Obviously, the hope was by now Maduro would be gone. Not only is he not gone, but the misery is spreading around the region as more and more refugees simply can't take it anymore. In some ways, that crisis is impacting all the countries he visited on this trip. And so it was a, a, top, a top topic of discussion, if you will, uh, during the visit throughout the region. So then how was the secretary received? Quite positively, uh, the Trump administration's stance on Venezuela is popular in the region, uh, although now some nations want the White House to be even tougher and are starting to question whether the U.S. is really willing to put its money where its mouth is and send military assets, assets in to back up uh, its convictions to oust Maduro. Uh, but in Paraguay, for example, uh, Pompeo was the first secretary of state to set foot there in more than 50 years. There was a huge local media scrum at the airport. Uh, unfortunately, the way the plane we were on works, journalists and staff have to come off first. So somewhere on Paraguayan TV, there's some very beleaguered-looking journalists and staffers uh, getting off uh, the plane before the secretary. <laughs> um, but the, uh, the foreign minister said in an effusive speech that he hopes this will be the start of a centuries-long and deeper friendship between that country and the United States. Christina, you also mentioned uh, the Trump administration is providing humanitarian aid to Venezuelans, but still implementing a hardline strategy at the U.S. southern border. Let's hear what he had to say. There's nothing like what's taking place at the hands of Nicolas Maduro anywhere in Central or South America. To compare the two is ludicrous. Nicolas Maduro is denying food that's sitting here. These aren't, these aren't people that are starving because the country doesn't have wealth. These are people that are starving because the political leadership, the military thugs inside of Venezuela have destroyed their capacity to produce crude oil. They have destroyed the capacity to grow crops. They've denied their people aid that is sitting right at the border. You saw the bridge today, welded trucks, preventing food from getting, this, this is horrific. There's nothing else in South America that compares to this. This is the largest movement of migrants in the history of the world, absent war. This is at the hands of Nicolas Maduro and no one else. And to compare it to situations anywhere else, I think just belies any true knowledge of the facts on the ground. So. I think I know the answer to this question, Rafini, but why is the U.S. so invested in Venezuela compared to other countries and refugees in similar situations? Uh, part of it is strategic, and part of it is because the situation is so extreme in Venezuela. The inflation rate is expected to reach 10 million percent this year. That's simply incomprehensible. And as bad as things are in the Northern Triangle countries, that's Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador, where the majority of the migrants coming into the U.S. come from, they haven't yet reached those levels that we're seeing in Venezuela. The other is because it plays into the U.S. strategic interests. Uh, elsewhere, Cuba and Russia are huge supporters of Maduro, and the U.S. U.S. wants them out of there, and they want them knocked out of that country because they want a sphere of influence uh, throughout the region. The U.S. is fairly popular in South America, and especially in the neighboring countries. So I think the thought is, is that if they can get Maduro gone, the U.S. could have friendly neighbors pretty much throughout the hemisphere, and especially uh, in the region around Venezuela. Really fascinating stuff, Christina. Thank you. Thank you so much.